everybody and welcome back to another brand new video where today we are continuing my new series of videos looking back on series one of Doctor Who. This week we reached episode four of course airing 15 years ago today it was Aliens of London. So yes this was the first part of a first two-parter in a um, new Doctor Who airing all those years 15 years ago today of course um, and a story that very much kind of well it brings everybody back to earth it brings the Doctor and Rose back to earth and kind of shows the repercussions of what's happened in the previous sort of in the time between the um, first episode and this one which is certainly an interesting element to explore I think. We of course with the first three episodes had had the present day episode, the future episode and the past episode and so Russell decided once we've got through all of that where he could bring it back to a big contemporary earth-based exciting two parts alien invasion -y type story I think is the the way forward for this one um, and it's one that I have always had a bit of a soft spot for maybe it is just the nostalgia of it all but I've never kind of disliked it as much as some people have who have just kind of completely written it off as a story said it's the worst of series one and all of that like actually I've always found quite a lot of enjoyment and interest and merit from this story in general personally I always have been a fan of earth be earth based and earth set stories um, stories that focus on sort of alien invasions of earth some sort of military based stories as well obviously stuff from the unit era um, in the 70s was always my probably my favorite era of classic who and so that kind of continues into why I always really enjoy the earth based stories as well just bringing that contemporary kind of relatable setting to any Doctor Who story I think is always really interesting and just being able to kind of imagine what the world would be like if this actually happened if there'd been some spaceship that had crashed into the Thames or hit hit Big Ben and then crash into the Thames like can you imagine that would have been absolutely crazy um, in real life if that happened and I just love that sort of possibility and that idea of thinking about what it would have been like and I think it's notable with this story that they really try to kind of utilize the um, elements of London landmarks and having it as very based London centric and London based something that we never really saw in the classic series to such the same extent. There were the occasional moments like the invasion you think back in the 60s where you had the Cybermen outside St Paul's Cathedral but they were very few and far between whereas here in this episode alone we've gone straight in and had this as I say the spaceship that's flown in across London crashed through Big Ben and smashed it up and then crashed into the River Thames. Downing Street and 10 Downing Street is a massive part of the whole story it's just making it such into such a kind of relatable and understandable at least to a British audience um, context that we all really know and recognize and everything is so sort of recognizable I think that works really really effectively in grounding the story and making it something you can really um, engage with I think. As I mentioned earlier it's an interesting exploration of the um, challenge of traveling in time and the doctor not quite getting things right in terms of um when they returned to earth of course so that it's been a year when rose gets back and that causes a lot of problems because of um jackie's obviously her mum's reaction to that was not so great as you can probably imagine um and it's just a really interesting exploration of what the sort of things that can happen when you go traveling with the doctor it does completely change your life and you can't just it's not always easy to just step back into your life again exactly how it was it's only been 12 hours oh yeah it's fine no problem you just pretend it was all normal again but actually Actually, this has all happened. Jackie's accused Mickey of killing her basically. Um, he's been interviewed low. She can't, Jackie just can't quite believe that she's disappeared and where she's gone to and there's a whole lot of sort of drama around that and I think it also reminds us again this is the first ever real establishments in Doctor Who of such a family setting for the companion and a real home life and set of characters around the companion not just the companions kind of swept up out of wherever they were didn't really have any connections to it and we never hear from them again whereas it's straight away episode four we're back we're back to earth we're back grounding that again we're back giving a character who's got a family around them just making them that much more relatable than what you would have seen at times in the classic series and it really is again just a template for the whole um RTD era essentially in terms of being so kind of family and character focused in that sense and having that almost soap opera style um, moments in there I mean the doctor almost kind of comments about that in in this episode talking about how he doesn't want any domestics in the TARDIS and everything it's almost that kind of joking point of he's that's that's not his thing that's not been the doctor's thing up until now is being involved with any sort of family or anything like that and he doesn't want any more of that but actually Russell's kind of bringing that into the show in the same way and I just think that's quite an interesting sort of parallel there that's explored so I think I, I think it's an interesting choice to explore the kind of the government in this episode as well and looking at sort of highly high political figures who of course are all been infiltrated by the Slovene and turned into Slovene most of them and the prime minister that has been killed um, interestingly reading up about that this the prime minister was supposed to be Tony Blair and apparently they'd hired some sort of Tony Blair impersonator who was 
was going to appear in a few shots, but then he turned up and they realised he doesn't look anything like Tony Blair, so they scrapped that and got rid of him and decided actually no, we're going to have, um, we're just going to try and not show him as much as possible. And I think maybe that Tony Blair impersonator was the guy falling out of the cupboard, but that's basically all they wanted to use of him because they realised it wasn't really going to work. And apparently this this episode also um, aired right around a UK election at the time, so Russell had to actually um, get in touch with editorial policy and check that it wasn't breaking any of the guidelines around what sort of stuff you can broadcast in relation to elections, um, just so that you don't influence any um, voters' opinions and things like that. And it's just very interesting that that happened um, right around the time they happened to write a story that was so heavily focused on the government and the high ups in the government and them being all sort of mischievous and secretive because they've been taken over by Slitheen. I just thought that was a, a really interesting and surprising thing that actually, just by pure coincidence has ended up that way. Clearly one of the most kind of talked about topics is the Slitheen themselves in this in this first part in particular. I think the, the idea of the farting aliens that you can't really take seriously. They've got a silly maniacal laugh that they fart a lot and they're just a little bit silly all around. I think there is no denying that there is a little bit of that in this in this episode. It is probably it is just a bit of campy RTD type stuff that he just kind of did quite often, really. Um, but it is notable that yes, they do fart too much. Yes, they are a bit silly. Yes, they do have some fairly ridiculous maniacal laughter where they spend about twenty seconds just having a little chuckle with each other about how they're going to they're going to take over the world or destroy the world or um, all of that. It's it's quite over the top and a little bit silly, I do tend to agree. I don't think it completely takes away from the story, but it probably does kind of um, take away some of the threat of the Slitheen, at least up to this point, because they are seemingly a bit silly villains, really, rather than any particularly dangerous or evil villains from what we've seen, at least. But I do really like the fact that we don't actually see a full proper Slitheen until right at the end of the episode. That's kind of the classic, really, a sort of thing that um, some good classic Doctor Who episodes used to do as well, of very much waiting until the end of episode one. The cliffhanger would be the first reveal of the new alien um, of that story, which and I think it's really nice that they look to use that again in this particular episode and have it as the cliffhanger is suddenly they're slithing everywhere, they're the, the good old triple cliffhanger that you've got going on there of the Doctor being about to die, um, a Slitheen standing, well, trying to kill the sort of um, one of the um, MOD aides or something, or secretaries or something like that, and with uh, Rose and Harriet Jones stood right there next to a massive Slitheen, and uh, Jackie about to get killed by a Slitheen as well. It's a proper, brilliant, exciting triple cliffhanger. Um, one that is also ruined within about five seconds because the next time trailer plays instantly afterwards and shows all the characters having escaped the current scenario they were in. So that was a bit of a poor decision, I think, by the production team to just tack the next time trailer on right there, what they should have done probably, which they did do at some point in the future with some of the other um, two-part stories of putting the next time trailer at the end of the credits, just so that at least if people don't want to see it, they can immediately switch off and you've got 30 seconds to do that rather than within about six seconds of the cliffhanger sort of happening, you've already seen the Doctor escape that and then Rose escapes it and then Jackie escaped it. It's kind of does just take away from it a little bit, which is a bit of a shame, I think. But I do just think there's some really interesting plot points in here. Of course, I've talked about the spaceship crashing on into um, the Thames and then we find out that actually it's just a pig who's been kind of experimented on and strapped up into a spaceship and that actually the spaceship has come from Earth and been sent out and back again. It's just not what you're kind of initially expecting. You think early on this story is just there's a spaceship that's crashed into the Thames, that's where the alien's going to come from, that's what it's going to be all about, but then actually we find out no, that's some sort of decoy that's been set up by whoever the real aliens are, ultimately the Slitheen, um, to try and sort of um, create this trap that all the experts and specialists will come into so that they can all be killed and then the um, Slitheen can more easily take over and destroy the world. It's, it's actually a really interesting idea that does just a nice sort of twist on the normal alien invasion type plotline. I think ultimately it's just quite a noticeable kind of change of tune really compared to last week's episode that was so scary and creepy and I, I commented on quite bold for Doctor Who to be doing, being so sort of dark in their kind of ghosts and spirits and demon possession or sp possession of by spirits and things that when is the last episode to go from that to farting aliens um, is quite a big change in the sort of vibe and the style of the show and it just shows that, well, to an extent it shows that Doctor Who can be all different things every single week it can very much go from a very dark to a more sort of light and comedic almost type aliens you can really have that wide variety but of course some work better than others and I know the critical reviews were never particularly great for this episode in particular it just the farting aliens just really really let the story down where there are other, where there are other elements that excel um, this element the, the Slitheen and that whole idea of them being farting aliens particularly when we don't really see them and see them as any of a threat through most of this story I think just makes it really difficult for them to be considered good and create a properly engaging exciting story with a real genuine dangerous threat that you feel like is a real 
um, scary threat and a scary presence that's just not really there in this episode in particular I think. So yeah it's by no means a bad story it's one that I personally have always quite enjoyed this whole two-parter is just one I've always really really enjoyed. It's probably worth mentioning Harriet Jones as well of course because she's first introduced in this story. She does she does love to stick her nose in a little bit and cause I, I I thought it was quite a bold thing for her to do if you think about it in character for her to go in and just sit in the cabinet room reading the emergency, emergency protocols. What happens if somebody happened to come back in there like she'd probably get sacked, maybe arrested or something for trying to read the official secrets and stuff. It seemed quite a dangerous thing for her to do. Um, but yes, yeah, so we get her character introduced for the first time. Of course, she's so iconic now. We all know Harriet Jones, MP for Flydale North, and then Harriet Jones, Prime Minister, of course, in, in the Christmas special onwards. Um, and yeah, it's just great to see her in there. But overall, as I say, a pretty solid story, if not one of the greatest of all time, but a still a pretty good one for me that I always have a bit of nostalgia for and always do enjoy. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this review, or this sort of look back on Aliens of London. I'll be back again next week to look at one World War 3, but apart from that, as always, hit that like button, that subscribe button if you're new here, and I'll see you again very soon for a brand new one. Goodbye.